Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to Shelf Stories. A uh, quick good trouble reflection as I sit here on my stoop uh, here in Hartford, Connecticut. Beautiful spring day, uh, but not so beautiful up here. Uh, I've been kind of uh, upset, perturbed uh, over the last 24 hours or so. Um, so uh, there was an occasion yesterday that just whew, uh, really got me. Uh, and something about it, I think, uh, articulates a lot about where we are. Uh, as a culture, not just in a larger culture, but in gaming culture as well. So the uh, situation was a white teenager uh, went to a supermarket in Buffalo, New York, that was known to be patroned by a largely black clientele, uh, goes inside, shoots the place up. Uh, 10 dead, as I record this, and others uh, injured as well. A person was, you know, detained, uh, is now in custody. So uh, the thing I wanted to talk about with this incident, uh, besides the fact that it's America and we just have this annoying problem, a uh, deadly problem with this, we were, that we are, so much of our culture refuses to beat head on. That sucks. Um, and the um, motivation of it. So apparently this person had put together a manifesto and uh, articulated the white replacement theory. And I wanted to do a specific video about that because the, so much of that, that's where I see the link between these, these crazy violent eruptions and the current friction that we're experiencing in gaming. I'm gonna talk about white replacement theory and how it just pervades so much of our interactions. And I'll explain that in a, as I go through the video. So um, explicit uh, language warning, uh, explicit themes, you know, a pretty uncomfortable conversation. So I wanted to give people a flag there. I'm going to go into uh, what I think in terms of the general concept. I'll define it and give it applications, uh, take a societal look. And then in the back half of my discussion, I'll talk about its application to gaming. So uh, strap in. All right. So uh, what is white replacement theory? Let me go ahead and give us some definitions. Uh, so I'll, I'll talk about three things. Uh, number one, uh, is an acknowledgement of the current status quo that the white folks are on the top. They got the stuff, they got the status, all that kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, it isn't just like a wish for it. It's an acknowledgement that that's the way the world is right now. Uh, you know, white folks on the top and then everybody else, you know, the marginalized folks and the women and the POC, and the different ethnicities are all kind of below that somewhere. But on the top is white folks. Uh, so that's number one, acknowledging that as a reality. Uh, a lived material reality. Uh, number two, that fact is celebrated. Now, this is the way the world should be. You know, the, that's the way that how it's always been, and therefore, you know, like, don't mess with success. Uh, you know, we want to keep things going, so keep the white folks on top. So a celebration of that, not just an acknowledgement. That's number two. Uh, number three is a skepticism about multiculturalism, diversity, inclusion. So, you know, when someone like me talks about that stuff and greater representation, all the multicultural stuff, that there's a, a rejection of that idea uh, based on the fact that they don't believe that the true multicultural um, society is possible, that things are kind of zero sum. If one group gains, the other group loses. And if we're talking in terms of, you know, societal hierarchy, the fear, there's, the, there's your white replacement, right? Uh, that we're going to replace the whites and bring them to the bottom. We're inverting the hierarchy. And all that happy talk, my happy talk, oh, greater inclusion. We're just going to, you know, we're just talking about inclusion. That, that's code for we want to hate on, blame, shame, and ultimately bring down and exclude white folks. That is the essence of white replacement theory. Now, there is a, a number of ways that get expressed and the most extreme way, the, the way that animates so many of these shooters and the violence and the hate speech and all that, the most extreme form of that is white genocide theory, that we're out to literally erase, kill, uh, you know, white folks that, you know, they have the stuff and the only way we're going to get it is if we take it from them and, you know, off of their dead bodies. That we promote uh, ideas that 
you know, the, the, their birth rates are going to be lower and, you know, we're going to displace them from academia, from neighborhoods and their jobs. We're going to literally replace their material reality with our own. That's like the genocide theory, uh, a genocide expression of it. But it doesn't have to go that far. You know, you don't have to be in that genocidal mode to at least have the fear in the back of you know people's minds that the, the, a subconscious acknowledgement that the white folks got the stuff and that others are coming for it. So that's what the theory is. It's kind of like uh, hierarchical flipping that uh, a lot of white folks out there think is happening and is trying with all their best to stop. So what animates that? And I said it a couple times before, now, but I'll uh, highlight it here. Fear. Fear of losing stuff. Fear of losing status, losing property, etc. And I need to emphasize that because very often this concept is uh, talked about in terms of hate. You know, uh, that person hates, you know, that, you know, the shooter hated black people. They hate, uh, you know, hate crimes. And like we, like reading the, 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 um, the press is so frustrating because, you know, hate, hate, hate. And that's just becomes the way we understand this stuff. And that's not, the, there's plenty of hate, but it's not the proper framing. There's so much that's missed when we look at it through the lens of just hate, you know, because uh, hate happens on the fringes, the margins. It's only, you know, uh, a, a nice moderate folk right in the middle is not going to identify with that. They're not going to say, uh, you know, oh, well, uh, you know, that's a problem. They're going to be like, okay, well, I don't hate. You know, everybody I know doesn't hate. Nobody hates here. So that shooter has nothing to do with me. That shooter has, you know, they have problems. They have mental health problems. That's another one. They get them mental health help or whatever it is. But we're all fine. And that is, to me, just completely misdiagnosing uh, what's happening. What's happening is not just these these one-off eruptions what's happening is within white culture writ large I, I i am not gonna back off of that statement within white culture writ large where two or three white folks are gathered this will start to kick up there is a fear maybe there's this there's this acknowledged thing or unacknowledged but like you know kind of aware in the back of the brain that white folks got it and that other people are coming for it and that's the fear. Now I say that, and you know, I gotta put it out there. Hashtag not all white people. Believe me, I totally affirm that an individual, I, don't, I will not ascribe this to any individual white person, someone who's watching the video. I get plenty of those comments where it's like, oh, well, you're just talking about all white people, A-L-L, -L, you know, that's all that kind of thing. And no, I'm not. It's a tendency. And you know, there's a plenty of people who are checked out of that mentality. You know, the white folks, not just on the left, but also on the right, have been able to talk through the issues. They're like, oh, okay, I see what you're saying now. Um, but that's like small potatoes. I'm talking large scale, you know, what happens when a bunch of white folks get together? Got the stuff, they got the fear that it can be taken away, and that's what I'm talking about. All right, so I've articulated uh, the definition, and I've talked about its uh, basis in kind of a fear, a loss aversion. Not hate, but fear changing the frame a little bit, which I hope opens up uh, the idea that this is a lot more broad-based than you know, we might think. Let's talk about how it applies in our gaming community, in our gaming conversations. So, example. Uh, so you'll have you know, the occasional post that goes up on you know, Reddit, BGG, Facebook, whatever. Uh, I would love to you know, uh, talk about uh, games that were designed by women. Or, uh, you know, give me your top couple of uh, black content creators. I'd love to give them a follow. That would be the whole post. And you get that immediate pushback from people that say, oh, why does it have to be about race? Well, what, are you trying to divide us? What, are you trying to exclude the white people? And you know, believe me, I'm trying really hard to not, like, make, uh, you know, the mocking voices or whatever it is. I'm trying, to, you know, trying the best I can because it pisses me off so much to hear that. And it's like, you know, what, do you only want that? Why does it matter? Why is it important that you interject into someone's desire to see something different? 
As a matter of fact, it has nothing inherently to do with white folks. It has to do with the scarcity of those voices. That's all it is. So like if we were if in a flip situation where it was a lot of black creators and a lot of women or whatever it is, then I might even want to ask about, you know, a, a white creator just to get a different opinion. That's kind of where we're at. It's just about, it's not about hating on white people. It's about the scarcity of it and wanting balance. But that is not how people take it. Why? Because of that fear. Because of this, I, there's so many people that are animated by the idea that, you know, if one group has, then they must be taking from another. That is the essence of white replacement theory. Of course, the person wouldn't say that explicitly, but that's the fear that is operating under all this stuff that is, that is just animating and inflaming so much of our conversations. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's gaming. I mean, I could talk about this, you know, up and down, left and right. I see it all over the place. Once you start looking for it, you realize how uh, frequent it really is. So um, the reason, uh, another reason why the shooting uh, kind of got me was because it happened at almost the exact same time as I was in a Walmart with my daughter. We were shopping for a bicycle and the Walmart was patroned by primarily black and brown clientele. I go to Hartford and Hartford, like a lot of cities, are segregated. You know, go to certain neighborhoods, a lot of white clientele, other neighborhoods, more of black and brown. That's just straight up, you see it. Let's be real here. And so obviously nothing happened, <laughs> thankfully, in that Walmart. But here's a small thing that did happen. So there was a, um, a young man, a young white man, who was one of the employees, and goes up to a family and asks them, you know, can, can I help you? And the, the family said, no hablo inglés. You know, they, they don't speak any uh, English. They, they want Spanish. And the kid says, fuck, another family that speaks fucking Spanish. Carlos, get over here and help him. Walks away in a huff. I'm thinking to myself, damn, that is nuts. And if I was looking at that through like a hate, framework, I would be like, okay, that person clearly hates Hispanic people. They got to quit this and go to another job um, just for their own safety and the safety of others. That's that's under a hate paradigm. But under a fear paradigm, a, a white replacement uh, paradigm, that person uh, is likely reacting to the idea that they probably can't get another job easily. That, you know, the jobs for them are becoming fewer and fewer and fewer because of the wave of Spanish people that are coming and the necessity of you know being Spanish or that society is kind of tilting towards them and away from him. And I'm not saying that's operating under this person's mind, but I've seen it. Someone told me to my face uh, when I was uh, doing psychotherapy in another part of uh, Connecticut and you know, a, a person, another Walmart worker, you know, says to me, you know, uh, I don't like be, I don't want to be here. You know, I don't want to be have to do therapy with you. I have to because someone made me. But, you know, people like you, you are threatening my job. <laughs> people like me. <laughs> I know exactly what they meant. Brown people like me. So the, there's the little incidences. You know, presione uh, uno para espanol when you call something. Or, you know, signs and just there's so many things that just, you know, someone who has that fearful instinct that is going to react negatively, think that their society is out to replace them as white people, uh, you know, and give the society over to others, foreigners, all that kind of thing. And you get, you know, the these, these situation where that's just, you know, people stewing it and there's not enough voices out there that are genuinely uh, articulating a multicultural vision where everyone's involved. It's just, we're, we're so siloed and we're so polarized. And so those kind of incidents combined with, you know, unfortunately we were, we're stuck in this situation where a lot of popular voices here in America are just stating it outright. You know, my friend, Tucker Carlson, not really my friend. Uh, or you know, just that person, uh, you know, it has guests on that constantly talking about it. And you know, previous ages, you know, the Rush Limbaugh's and the um, the Bill O'Reilly's and th these people, you know, on that side. And yes, I'm picking on a side, but that's <laughs> that this theory belongs to y'all. So there you go. Uh, you know, you 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 
get, you combine this experience of people feeling excluded in these little ways, in gaming, in Walmart, in life, in a thousand different ways, all of a sudden they get animated by people who are of note articulating these things and all of a sudden, every once in a while, you get a radical. That's how it works. They don't fall from the sky. And so what do we do with that? I mean, uh, what do we do with this broad-based fear that is, you know, kind of has an impact and is so much and as so many quarters of our society, this fear of white replacement felt by, you know, a lot of white folks, even if they're not acknowledging it. Uh, what do we do with that fear that occasionally erupts in these moments of what I call hierarchy enforcement? And at the end of the day, that shooter was engaged in hierarchy enforcement, you know, uh, you know, keep the hierarchy the way it is by wiping out people, you know? So how do we deal with that whole thing? Uh, here in gaming. So in gaming, we're obviously at the lower end of that. We're just, we're dealing with the fear. Thankfully, we're not dealing with outbursts of violent hate, but we are dealing with harassment. That's what Gamergate was all about. That's what a lot of these things were all about. So it's important that, you know, we deal with it. We come up with strategies. So I'll, so I'll speak to three constituencies. Uh, number one, a uh, folks on the progressive side, my side of things. And I make no bones about it many, many times. Uh, Folks who acknowledge the racial and gender and all the hierarchies uh, and who want to change it and who really want, you know, to be included and to speak for you know, marginalized voices and all that kind of thing. So I think there's a tendency on our side to think of things like diverse, diversity, inclusion, multiculturalism. They're just good things. They're just things that everyone should want. And they are, really. But that's not how a person in that white a replacement mindset experiences that. You know, we say multiculturalism, they think I'm being excluded. We say diversity, they think rejection and stigma the, uh, upon the white people. And, you know, I think that we could do more to, you know, really be explicit about, like, no, this isn't about exclusion, this is about a multicultural vision. And I happen to, you know, I listen to the people on my side, we were articulating that, we're articulating that you know we we don't just want uh, ourselves included, but we do want a genuinely multicultural space where everyone is included. Uh, some folks do it. Some folks, uh, uh, some folks, quite frankly, are tired of white people bullshit. Of how you know they their own emotional state leads them so often to not hear what we're saying and to interpret what we're saying so uncharitably. Like, you know, uh, you know, as if when Jason says multiculturalism, he really means exclusion. And there's a lot of people that are so tired of it and they just don't want to play this game. It's like just, you know, diversity, inclusion, boom, done. And for me, my own approach is to, uh, you know, as much as possible, answer that fear, assuage that fear, and you know, say what I got to say. I'm not going to back down. But there are people who aren't locked in yet. There are people who aren't locked into that white replacement. And, you know, it may just be an unspoken fear in the back of their minds. And to just come out and say, you know what? No, I, no I, you're included too. You know? Um, so I think we could get better at that. I'm willing to have that discussion about, you know, how much to reach out to <laughs> folks, how much is too much, and all that kind of thing. But it's, it's a discussion worth having, for sure. That's number one. Uh, number two is uh, to folks who believe in the hierarchy. There's some pe there are some folks out there, either they believe in the hierarchy or they're just coming at it from a place of deep skepticism about, you know, true multiculturalism or, you know, for whatever reason they like, they, they acknowledge the way things are and they like it that way. My invitation to that crowd, whoever amongst those is listening, is I do not want to replace I do not want to flip hierarchies. Being on that bottom of the hierarchy sucks. It does. And y'all know it too. And so why would I want to replicate that? There's enough out there for everybody. There's, a, there's enough, uh, you know, I don't think of in terms of scarcity. I think in terms of abundance, you know, like, I mean, there's tons of games. You know, there's tons of space in communities. There's tons of, you know, uh, spaces at tables for uh, as many people as possible, right? Uh, so try it. And at the very least, uh, you know, try to tune down your own uh, interpretation of, of white uh, replacement uh, idea 
and try to you know listen to what is being said. If I'm not saying explicitly I want to get the white people out, then that's not what I mean. And the very least, if I reach one person <laughs> who's in that other side, fine. You know, it's worth it's worth the effort. And so the last constituency I'll address is the biggest one of all, the white moderate middle of the hobby. And I see this construction so often in forums, how people will say, oh, let, let, let's just play games. And, you know, why are we arguing them? You know, let's just be in the middle. The extremes are ruining it. You know, that, that, that extreme and that extreme. And, you know, they're the ones that are causing all the noise. They need to calm down and come, you know, into the, the hobby. And, you know, there are people who they might even believe in the multicultural stuff, like they're not on the other side, but they say, you know, it, we already have it. My table is open. I don't see race. And, you know, why don't we just calm down and just you know, play? <laughs> Anyone who sees my previous videos knows what I think about that. But very, very quickly, gaming is not as open as people think it's in the moderate center. Uh, it is largely an illusion. At the very least, when I'm talking to, you know, uh, someone on that other, you know, white replacement extreme and who knows it, we're acknowledging the same reality. Like, okay, but they happen to like it, we don't. Uh, at the very least, there's that clarity. When, I'm, when we're talking to a moderate where it's almost like it piercing that cloud, that bubble, that illusion that gaming is already okay and already multicultural, it's struggling whatever gains have been made have been because of activists and because of people sticking their neck out and enduring a lot of crap from a lot of quarters to because we love gaming so much so that's number one the construction in the first place uh, number two is so often i've seen this so often when there's a a, cho a choice to make who am I going to have empathy for? Whose side am I, am I more empathetic towards? Not whose side I take, but whose side do I have empathy for? So many white moderates will gravitate towards that white side. Why? Because they understand that fear. You know, they're, you know the person that is like exploding uh, is you know, stating that thing. I don't want to be excluded. I feel like you all are attacking me and the woke of SJW and all that kind of stuff. And so many white moderates, they on a... On a deep level understand that fear because there's a fear on them that we're going to exclude nice people too i've heard that you know like there's people like oh i'm just a nice guy and i feel excluded so when other people talk about being excluded there's like well i have empathy for that because they're excluding them they're you know if they're getting excluded then i'm next and so there's an identification and empathy a grace that's given and so if, if you look at it that way, it's this massive weight towards the status quo, towards the white hierarchy, towards the fear. And a, what happens is that our side just gets continuously misinterpreted. How many times do I got to say I don't want to exclude? How many times do I got to say that this isn't about blaming, shaming? This is about opening up the hobby. I, I don't reject white people any individual white people i what i what i want to question is white centrality this you know the idea that the white person is considered normal that's what i want to question and ultimately move past because we have to move past it if we really want a multicultural society so my invitation to the moderate is notice if your empathy is going towards one side or the other. Realize that on the progressive side, we're gamers too. Now, I'm not saying we do it great all the time. I'm not saying that we're, you know, just listen to us in all things. What I am saying is see whether your interpretation of, what, of the argument, whatever argument, is clear or whether your interpretation might be colored, tinged by that fear that we're going to replace you and we want to replace you try to overcome fear that's my invitation and so uh yeah this has ended up being a lot longer i don't know how long this is i know i recorded multiple segments yeah <laughs> uh my videos always tend to be a lot longer than i want them to be however this one is super important and in a way the fear of right replacement uh animates all of my videos uh, all so many that so much of the discussion just you know gets inflamed 
by this idea on you know certain people, whether you're moderate or whether you're more extreme than that, uh, that we are you know that progressive folks like that want to take something from y'all, that we want to replace you in this hobby and, and exclude you. I deal with that all the time, so I really wanted to have a separate video to talk about that. So if you agree or disagree, uh, you please uh, comment. Uh, if you, you you have something to say about like kind of the three uh, entities, you know, the, the, the progressives and the you know white replacement, whatever, and the, the, the middle, the moderate middle, you know, want to talk about that, want to talk about the definition, anything. Uh, I'm willing to engage most perspectives. Obviously, there are some perspectives that I will not engage. If, if you are a person that thinks that hierarchy is good, you know, we can disagree whether how much you know, hierarchy there is in society, but there's some people out there that think hierarchy is good. That, you know, we should have men at the top, women, uh, or men at the top, women at the bottom, white at the top, black at the bottom, and, uh, and et cetera. If you believe that and you're willing to, uh, you know, kind of state that unapologetically, then don't have a lot of space for that. Because those are my values are a multicultural world where all are included. So unless you're there, if you're just exploring, or if there's a lot of like fear and misinterpretation there, you don't know, really know what to think. I'll make time for you. I'll do the best that I can. That's my promise. If you can change your mind, you can change the world, people. So until next time, everybody.